Welcome to the Dash 8 Q400 Systems Training Course Pressurization Module. In this module, we will present an overview of the pressurization system before describing the various valves located around the aircraft. We'll then discuss the cabin pressurization controller and the various modes that the cabin pressure system operates in. We'll also discuss cabin pressure scheduling and describe the various readouts available on the flight deck. We'll also talk about smoke evacuation and the emergency ram air circulation system. Last but not least, we'll discuss the limitations and normal and abnormal procedures of the cabin pressurization system. Like most other transport category aircraft, the Dash 8 Q400 is pressurized for passenger safety and comfort. The pressurized section of the Dash 8 Q400 encompasses the entire fuselage between the forward pressure bulkhead, located in front of the flight deck, and the aft pressure bulkhead, located in the tail section of the Dash 8. This section contains the flight deck, the passenger cabin, and the aft cargo area. The Dash 8, like most other pressurized airliners, is pressurized by forcing bleed air into the cabin. For more information on the bleed system, see the pneumatics module. The cabin pressure itself is modulated by regulating the amount of air leaving the cabin through an outflow valve. The outflow valve is controlled by a cabin pressurization controller or CPC. A series of other valves located around the pressure vessel provide additional safety releases for the aircraft pressure vessel. There are three valves around the pressure vessel which regulate pressure within the aircraft. The outflow valve is located on the aft pressure bulkhead. It is the normal way that pressurized air leaves the cabin in flight. The outflow valve is controlled electrically and is normally regulated by the cabin pressure controller to maintain the required pressure in the cabin. Additionally, two safety valves are installed on the Q400, one on the aft pressure bulkhead and one on the forward pressure bulkhead. The safety valves are both dual valves which open in the event of overpressure of the cabin or should a negative pressure differential exist. Negative pressure occurs when the air pressure outside the cabin is higher than the pressure in the cabin and most aircraft are only designed to have higher pressure inside rather than out. Negative pressure places unexpected stress on the fuselage and can lead to failure. The safety valves are a set of simple spring-loaded mechanical valves. Should the positive or negative pressure limits be exceeded, the excess pressure will force the valve open to vent the excess pressure. The valve will close again once the excess pressure is released. The safety valve is adjusted by maintenance and will open should positive pressure exceed 5.8 psi or negative pressure exceed negative 0.5 psi. The forward safety valve can also be manually opened by two controls in the flight deck. One is on the overhead panel on the cabin pressurization panel and allows you to vary how much the forward safety valve opens from full closed to full open. The other control is near the first officer's right knee and only functions as an on off switch, either fully open or fully closed. The cabin pressure controller or CPC is a computer that automatically determines the appropriate cabin altitude for all phases of flight. The CPC is almost completely automatic. The only input required from the pilots normally is the landing field altitude, which is selected on the pressurization panel any time prior to starting descent. The CPC also gathers information about outside air pressure from the air data system, air ground status from the proximity sensor electronic unit, and internal cabin pressure, as well as power lever position. All of this information is combined and compared to the present cabin altitude schedule. As well as determining the required cabin altitude, the CPC normally regulates the rate at which the cabin altitude climbs or descends to keep the rate comfortable for passengers and crew. The CPC performs a self-test whenever it is powered on. During the test, the fault light on the cabin pressurization panel illuminates briefly and then extinguishes. Should the CPC detect any problems with its operation later, the fault light will illuminate and remain on. The cabin pressurization system can be operated in several different modes. Automatic is the most common mode. For this mode, auto must be selected on the cabin pressurization panel and the forward outflow valve controls must be set to closed. In this mode, the CPC has full control of cabin pressurization. Manual mode is activated by selecting man on the cabin pressurization panel. In this mode, the flight crew takes direct control of the outflow valve using the man diff switch on the cabin pressurization panel. Selecting increase moves the outflow valve towards closed, holding more air inside and increasing the differential between inside and outside. 
effectively lowering the cabin altitude. Selecting Decrease moves the outflow valve towards open, allowing more air to escape the cabin and decreasing the differential between inside and outside. This effectively raises the cabin altitude. Keep in mind that this man diff switch describes the pressure differential, not the cabin altitude. To raise the cabin altitude, you must decrease the differential between inside and out, and vice versa. To allow fine control, the outflow valve position adjusts very slowly when this switch is held to increase or decrease. From full open to full closed, or vice versa, requires holding the switch to increase or decrease for up to 50 seconds. When the pressurization system is in manual mode, it is important to note that the crew directly controls the outflow valve. It is imperative that the flight crew monitor the cabin altitude indications to ensure that the outflow valve position is having the desired effect on the cabin altitude. Dump mode is activated by selecting Dump on the cabin pressurization panel. In this mode, the outflow valve moves to and remains at full open, dumping cabin air out of the aircraft as quickly as possible. Emergency mode is used whenever the outflow valve fails. In emergency mode, the crew manages the pressurization using the forward outflow valve control on the pressurization control panel. Other than using a different valve, emergency mode is very similar to manual mode and the flight crew must continually monitor the cabin pressurization indications to ensure the cabin altitude is on target. One other important note about emergency mode is that the forward outflow valve does not require electricity to operate. So in the event of a full or partial loss of electrical power, emergency mode can still maintain cabin pressure. For most flights, the CPC will be operated in automatic mode. In automatic mode, the CPC will try to follow a predefined schedule, which is shown here. This chart shows how cabin altitude is scheduled through a typical flight. There are five distinct phases shown here that the CPC moves through. Anytime an aircraft is on the ground, as sensed by weight on wheels, the outflow valve is open fully to prevent the airplane from pressurizing once the bleed systems are activated. As an additional measure, the CPC is able to command the aft safety valve to open whenever an engine or APU is running to allow even more air to leave the cabin as soon as any bleed system is turned on. The first flight phase is pre-pressurization. Pre-pressurization occurs when the power levers are moved above 60 degrees, so basically when takeoff power is set. In pre-pressurization, the aircraft is pressurized to an altitude approximately 400 feet below the takeoff altitude, which the CPC records as the current altitude of the aircraft. By closing the outflow valve before liftoff to pressurize the cabin, this prevents the normal pressurization bump that occurs when an airplane lifts off and the outflow valve then closes. Once the airplane is airborne, the aircraft enters climb, cruise, and ascent modes. In these modes, the CPC strives to follow the cabin altitude schedule shown on this graph. For example, when the aircraft altitude reaches 10,000 feet, the CPC will be working to try to keep the cabin altitude at approximately 2,000 feet. The cabin pressure schedule represents a comfortable compromise that minimizes pressure differential at lower altitudes, which puts less stress on the airframe over its lifetime, while ensuring that excessive cabin climb and descent rates are not required at the higher altitudes. For the climb and cruise phase, the cabin climb rate is normally limited to 300 feet per minute to ensure comfortable changes to cabin altitude. This limit can be overridden if the cabin reaches the maximum differential, in which case the cabin will climb at the maximum differential, whatever this climb rate may end up being. Scheduling for the descent is a little bit more complicated. Because high rates of descent are possible, and not entirely unusual, the cabin descent rate is allowed to vary as well. For descents up to 2,300 feet per minute, the cabin altitude will descend at a maximum 300 feet per minute. For aircraft descent rates above 2,300 feet per minute, the cabin descent rate will increase until it reaches a maximum of 1,000 feet per minute if the airplane is descending at 3,000 feet per minute or more. While this scheduling should, in theory, not allow the aircraft altitude to ever catch up to the cabin altitude, it is possible. On flights with a continuous, very high rate of descent that leads directly into an approach with no intermediate level off, it is possible for the aircraft altitude to descend below the cabin altitude. Should this happen, of course, the safety valves will open to ensure a negative pressure differential does not occur. When this happens, the cabin will descend at the same rate as the aircraft. While catching the cabin is usually short-lived, this phenomenon can cause a very uncomfortable rate of descent in the cabin until the aircraft rate is reduced on final approach.
For this reason, it is a good idea not to plan for descent rates in excess of 2,000 feet per minute in the Dash 8. For landing, the flight crew sets the elevation of the landing field on the pressurization control panel. During descent, the CPC follows the cabin altitude schedule until the cabin reaches 400 feet below the landing field set on the pressurization control panel. The cabin altitude then remains at this altitude until weight on wheels is sensed. After touchdown, the cabin climbs at a preset rate for one minute. Once the minute is up, the CPC switches to ground mode and commands the outflow valve to open fully, relieving any remaining pressure in the cabin. There is an additional flight mode programmed into the CPC, Flight Abort Mode. This mode is an extension of takeoff mode. For up to 10 minutes after takeoff, the CPC will remember the takeoff field elevation. Should an immediate return to landing be required, for any kind of emergency during takeoff, for example, the flight crew does not need to remember to set the landing field elevation. Once the aircraft starts descending again, the CPC will descend the cabin until 400 feet below the remembered takeoff field elevation, just as if a landing field was set. Flight abort mode remains armed until 10 minutes after takeoff or the airplane reaches 5,000 feet above the takeoff field elevation. After either of these points is reached, the pilots must manually set the landing field elevation for whatever airport they are landing at. The cabin pressure is monitored on the pressurization indication panel located on the overhead panel. This panel has three gauges. The first gauge shows the cabin differential. This is the difference in pressure between the outside air pressure and the pressure inside the cabin, as indicated in PSI. The green arc on this gauge shows the normal differential seen at higher altitudes. The red arc shows the upper limit to cabin differential pressure, and above this, structural failure is possible. The second gauge shows the current altitude of the air inside the cabin. This value is indicated in thousands of feet. When unpressurized, the cabin altitude should be approximately the same as the airplane altitude. Note the white arc. This indicates normal, safe cabin altitudes. Should the cabin altitude pass the top of this white arc, the cabin press emergency light will alarm. The third gauge shows the rate of climb for the cabin in thousands of feet per minute. This can be used to monitor the rate of climb or descent. In most modes, it is limited to 300 to 500 feet per minute for passenger comfort. Values exceeding this may indicate problems with the pressurization system. Just above the three gauges is a small chart that indicates the ideal cabin altitude for various airplane cruise altitudes and is an approximation of the programmed cabin altitude schedule shown earlier and stored inside the CPC. This chart is provided for two purposes. First, the crew, upon leveling off in cruise, can easily verify that the cabin altitude is stable at the correct value. Second, during manual operation, the crew has a quick reference of target cabin altitudes for various aircraft altitudes. Normally, air from the Dash 8 exits the aircraft through the aft outflow valve. Should there be smoke in the flight deck that needs to be removed quickly, however, this can be accomplished by opening the forward outflow valve using the controls in the flight deck. This procedure has two advantages. First, the smoke is evacuated more directly from the flight deck instead of being sucked rearward to the normal outflow valve. And additionally, cabin pressurization is not immediately lost by opening these valves, as the outflow valve will close when the pressure in the cabin begins to drop. Should pressurization be lost, or if unpressurized flight is desired, then an alternative source of fresh air is required. An emergency ram air inlet is located on the left side of the dorsal fin at the front of the tail on the Dash 8. Air entering through this inlet then passes through a check valve and enters the air conditioning ducts downstream of the air conditioning packs. Should emergency ram air circulation be required, the normal procedure is to switch the CPC to manual mode and hold the manual control at increase for up to 50 seconds to fully close the outflow valve. Once the outflow valve is fully closed, the forward outflow valve is fully opened, which encourages fresh air to flow through the entire cabin from back to front. The following aircraft limitations apply to the pressurization system. The normal maximum cabin differential pressure is 5.46 psi, plus or minus 0.1 psi. This is the target for the CPC in normal operations at cruise altitude. The absolute maximum cabin differential pressure is 5.95 psi. This is the maximum value before the safety valve opens.
structural failures can begin to occur above this value. The maximum cabin pressure differential during taxi, takeoff, and landing is 0.5 psi. Because of the extra strain put on the airframe by ground operations, especially landing, it is imperative that the fuselage not be strained by accommodating high pressure differential between inside and outside of the fuselage. Note the maximum cabin altitude during normal flight should be 8,000 feet. Under normal procedures, the operation of the pressurization system is almost completely automatic, controlled by the CPC according to the cabin altitude schedule. The only setting that needs to be adjusted by the crew is the landing field elevation selection. This is set depending upon the airline, either prior to departure or prior to top descent as part of the approach briefing. There are a number of critical procedures associated with abnormalities in the pressurization system. As always, follow the appropriate checklist. The most critical pressurization issue is a loss of pressurization. If the cabin press warning light illuminates, it means the cabin altitude has climbed above 9,800 feet and the amount of oxygen in the cabin may not be sufficient for continued safe operation. The first item on the cabin press checklist is to verify the emergency on the cabin altitude indicator and determine the severity of the problem by how fast the cabin is climbing. A slowly climbing cabin may indicate a problem with the bleeds and there may be time to complete the checklist. However, if the cabin is climbing quickly, the crew must immediately don oxygen masks and consider an immediate emergency descent, which will be discussed shortly. After checking the cabin altitude, the next several items are designed to check that the bleed and pressurization system are configured correctly. The most common cause of pressurization issues is flight crew not configuring the systems correctly and can often be rectified by ensuring the bleeds are in fact turned on or the pressurization system is configured for automatic mode. Perform the checklist and monitor the cabin altitude to see if the cabin has begun pressurizing properly. An emergency descent is performed any time the aircraft must be descended quickly. While it is often used for uncontrollable pressurization issues to return to a breathable environment, it could also be used should a fire require an emergency landing. Note that the entire procedure is a memory item. The flight crew must be able to perform this entire procedure quickly should it be required and thus they must perform it from memory. The checklist is completed once the aircraft is descending to ensure that all the required items have been accomplished. Before doing anything, the crew must don their oxygen masks to ensure that they remain able to function and perform their duties throughout the descent. The mic selector on the ARCDU must also be switched to mask to ensure the microphone in the oxygen mask is activated and the crew can still communicate with each other. At this point, the passenger seatbelt sign must be turned on to indicate to passengers to return to their seats. Many airlines also make a specific PA announcing the descent at this point, such as cabin crew rapid descent. The most important thing to get the airplane descending is to pull the power levers to flight idle, increase the condition levers to max, which helps to increase drag at idle, and then pitch down to accelerate to maximum safe speed or VMO. However, keep in mind that if the pressurization issue has been caused by aircraft damage, speed may need to be limited to reduce stress on the damaged airframe. Many airlines add a few extra steps prior to starting the descent. They may include activating all external lights to make the airplane very conspicuous as they begin descent, or more importantly, setting an appropriate altitude to level off at. 10,000 feet, or the lowest altitude that allows terrain clearance, is normally set, whichever of these two is higher. Do not extend the gear or flaps to increase the rate of descent. The lower airspeed required to safely extend these negates any extra drag that they create. The maximum rate of descent in the Dash 8 is accomplished in the clean configuration at VMO. Should an unpressurized flight be required, a checklist is provided. Basically, the dump valve is opened and the bleeds are used on max to provide as much airflow into the cabin as possible. A checklist is also provided should ram air ventilation be required. As previously explained, this process involves shutting off all internal sources of air and closing the aft outflow valve to force air to flow through the entire cabin back to front. If all cabin pressure indications are lost, the aircraft must be descended to a safe altitude and flown unpressurized. This is because the result of overpressurizing the aircraft and not being aware of it could be catastrophic. As was mentioned in the limitations section, the cabin must be essentially unpressurized for landing. 
If a cabin differential is still seen while on approach, the forward outflow valve must be opened to ventilate as much pressure as possible. We will now conduct a brief review. I suggest you prepare to pause the video as each question is displayed and attempt to answer it yourself before the correct answer is revealed. Let's begin. This concludes the current module. I hope you found this information useful. Please ask any questions you may have in the comments section below. And please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when more modules are complete. Thank you for watching.